you all are absolutely amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you so very much. <laughs> Welcome again uh, to this uh, amazing channel. Thank you to each and every one of you. You are the reason why we are here. And it's an honor to serve you all. It's an honor. It's an honor to serve you all. I'm so grateful for those who are here watching, for those who are listening, for those who are sharing to God be the glory. I bless each and every one of you and I thank God for you all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So today we're here again. <laughs> we're here again with absolute love. The Bible says, let me just begin this way, right? I'm just going to begin with this scripture. Romans chapter 8 verse 1. It says, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are what? For those who are in Christ Jesus. We're not here to condemn any person because we understand that we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against powers and powers of wickedness and all these powers everywhere uh, but we thank god that we have already overcome first john chapter 2 he says we have already overcome the wicked one so we understand that every day we're rising you know into the identity that the father has already placed us in coming out of religion yeah we're all still coming out of religion because it's been we've been in religion for a long time do you see it why because our parents were in it and they didn't know any better and um you know and we thank god that through what uh, the dimension in which we're walking in we're bringing them gradually and thank god that some parents are already knowledgeable about this we thank god for them too to god God be the glory. So today, I just wanted us to look at this um, uh, this uh, scripture uh, and, and this statement that has always been used in religion. You know, it's a place where the Father has been correcting our notion because a lot of the things that religion has been speaking unto us has brought about a lot of limitations rather than elevations. Can you see it? They've brought limitations. Why has it brought limitations? This is because, you know, a lot of people have not really stopped to ask questions and ask why are things this way are they true you know is this real is this supposed to be this way but do you know what we do most of the time because we met it here we go along with it and just because we met it here does not mean it's right L like we've all understood just because we met christmas here does not make it right because the bible says god hates it so gradually we begin to see that the lord is reconciling that is why the bible tells us he has given us what the ministry of reconciliation this is what jesus came to do he came to what reconcile all things back to the father what does this mean there were there were you know things were a certain way in the beginning god but then man came along and began to move away from the things of God and thereby creating their own agenda. Now the Lord is sending his own son to reconcile us back to the father. How things should be right inside of the father. So we're going to look at this scripture today. Uh, John chapter 3 and verse 27. I believe when I read this scripture, we're all going to be, uh, it's something that we've all done. I've done it before. <laughs> so we thank God for the mercy of God. So um, we're going to start from verse 27. The Bible says to this, John replied, a person can receive only what is given them from heaven. You yourselves can testify that I said, I am not the Messiah, but I'm sent ahead of him. The bride belongs to the bridegroom. The friend who attends the bridegroom waits and listens for him and is full of joy when he hears the bridegroom's voice. The joy is mine and it is now complete. He must become greater and I must become less. Can I read that again? He said he must become greater I must become less. So you can see that this verse have been used in religion time and time again. In prayer, they have taught it unto each and every one of us in times past. You must become less for Jesus to become greater. You must become less for Jesus to become greater. Now, I want us to understand something very clearly. John came to prepare the way for Jesus. John was sharing this testimony because he had fulfilled his assignment. Can you see it? He had come. You know, remember Apostle Paul when he said the same thing? I have finished the race. Can you see it? This is the testimony of John speaking. I have finished my race. Now I must become less because the one I have come to prepare the way for is here. So it is now time for him to take over. So now I must, you know, take a step back for Jesus to come to the forefront because he's the reason why I am here. So, 
This will begin to help us to understand. For too long, religion has continued to use this term, but that put people in slavery rather than into what? In liberty, dying to self. Remember that statement, which is absolutely wrong. Now, I want us, before we go there, I just want us to understand. You know, Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth will what? Will set you free. Who is Jesus? I want us to ponder on this question. Who is Jesus? We know that Jesus is the Son of God. We know that he is, is God. We know that he came from God. We know that he died on the cross. We know he resurrected on, on the third day. But who is Jesus? Yes? <laughs> who is he? So we begin to understand. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, Jesus is a son. So now we begin to understand the same question applies to you. Who are you? I know you are the name that you bear. Very true. Your mother, your father gave you that name. But who are you inside of that name? Who are you really? What are you here to do? Have you ever considered that? I want you to take time out and just ask the Lord that question. Who am I? And what am I here to do? You will be surprised at what he will <laughs> reveal to you. So you begin to understand. So I'm going to lay a foundation of who you are because you're born again. I believe that you are. You're a son. That is who you are. But first of all, I want to clear that notion. You're not a Christian. You're not a child of God. You're not a believer. And you're not a servant. Why? Because John 8, 35, 36 declares. It says, a sin Anyone who sins is slave to sin. And he says a slave has no permanent place, but a son belongs to it forever. So you can begin to see, you begin to understand Christianity is slavery. Being a child of God is slavery. Being a believer is slavery. Being a servant is slavery. Why did I say that? Christianity, Acts 11, 25, 26. It says they went into Antioch and for the first time they were called Christians. For the first time time that was where they called them christians when jesus was leaving what did he say the commission go ye into the world and make me disciples jesus called you a disciple you went into greece and they called you a christian now you're going by so you've left disciple out and you're going by christian the christian world the christianity identity jesus called you a disciple a man called you a Christian and you decided to go with what man said rather than what God says <laughs> because there is nowhere in the scripture that Jesus calls you a Christian. What does a Christian mean? It says to be Christ-like. Does that not go against the word of God? Because the Bible says anyone who adds to the word, he will be accursed. Now, the Bible tells us it is you who no longer live because you've been crucified with Christ. So you've been crucified with him. It is you who no longer live. So that means you are Christ. And by that identity, you're a son. So why are you a Christian? Because you're Christ-like. The Bible tells you you're Christ. And Christianity says you're Christ-like. You can see where you're being still being tossed to and fro. So we continue. The Bible tells us in the book of Acts chapter 27, Apostle Paul stood before Agrippa. He said, hey, you know, are you trying to make me a Christian too? Agrippa asked. Paul said, no, I'm trying to make you who I am except for these chains. Who is Apostle Paul? He is a son. He wrote about our sonship in the book of Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians. If you read most of his writing, he calls you a son even in the book of Hebrews. So, you continue to understand that dimension. You're not a Christian. So, going on quickly, a child of God. You are not a child of God. The Bible tells us in the book of Galatians chapter 4, it says, a child who is an heir is no different from a slave. A child is no different from a slave. I am a child of God. You're not different from a slave because a child is someday supposed to grow up. That is why the Bible says, until the appointed time, so we see it in the Bible. Jesus came out as a child. Mary said, uh-uh, it is not yet time. Because the Father, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The Father did not give a child. He gave a son. Can you see? Maturity is sonship. So there is no mature Christians or baby Christians. All of you are in slavery. So it's a place where it's understandable. So that's why the Father is bringing you out of Christianity so that you're no longer a slave, but now a son. So in the same way, you're no longer a child of God, but still a what? A son. So you can understand the word believer 
It is because you believed. That is why you became a son. That's why you became a born again. Yes, you believed and you became. So if you continue to remain a believer, how then can you grow? Because you are staying on one level, the foundation of your entry. That's where you're still at, if you continue to affirm as a believer. So now you understand in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13, it says, Cursed is the one that was hung on a pole. In 14, it says, All this was done so that we may enter or we may inherit the blessings of Abraham. So now you begin to understand. Who did God call Abraham in the Old Testament? He said, Abraham is my friend. Jesus said to us, he said, I no longer call you servants. I call you friends. But we're still under religion where we call ourselves servants, child of God, you know, Christians and believers. All of that term is slavery. Anyone who continues to identify as that is still a slave. Can you see it? So now you are a son because as you are in Christ Jesus. The Bible says, as he is, so are you. Jesus is not the child of God. Jesus is the son of God. You are not a child of God. You are a son of God. So you can begin to understand that dimension. So we clear that out of the way, you know, for us to understand that any identity apart from your sonship is slavery. So that statement, I must decrease, is the reason why a lot of people are still limited. Yes, because you cannot go beyond what you have become because you must decrease. Why are you decreasing when the Father is wanting you to increase? Because the scripture tells us the Father is always wanting to increase. He's always wanting to increase. So the moment you're affirming to yourself and praying, Father, I must decrease so that you must increase. I must decrease so that you must increase. You are already Christ. Isn't it the same thing when they tell us, that what? In Colossians 1.19. Let's read Colossians 1.19 so that we can better understand what the Father's will. You know, the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 12, the perfect will of God. And this is the perfect will of God for you and for me because of that reason to enter into the inheritance that he has ordained for us. The Bible says, for it pleased the Father. It pleased past tense. That what? In him, all the fullness should dwell. So for it pleased the Father, because you are already in Christ, it is you who no longer live, but Christ who now lives in you. So Christ that you have become, it pleased the Father that in you should dwell his fullness. And by you to reconcile all things to himself, by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Can you see it? He wants to reconcile through you. How can you be recon how can you reconcile when you're praying to be decreased? But the Father, so look at the struggle. <laughs> the Father is not struggling with you. It is you struggling with the Father. Because you know why? He has already declared his will, but you have not accepted the, the, his will. Because he's saying, I'm trying to increase you, but you are praying to be decreased. Do you see it? You're praying to be decreased while I'm trying to increase you. You have to understand that you are now his son. You are Christ, according to Galatians 2.20. So you can begin to understand that statement too when people say, I'm dying to self. I'm dying to self. We've shared that on this channel before, helping us to understand that it is a wrong affirmation. Dying to self, it is not scriptural. How can you die to self? When the Lord needs yourself to rise and increase so that he can use yourself to do great and mighty things. <laughs> so you can begin to understand it. Jesus does not want you to die to self. He has already died on the cross. So what die are you dying again? He says you died with him. So what die, what dying are you dying again? Because you have to understand, we have already been crucified with him. We have already died with him. So now it is time to live. So why are you still dying when he's asking you to live? Limitation. <laughs> so you can see it. That's why you understand that scripture because a lot of people use that scripture. I die daily. I die daily. Dying daily was not dying to self. That is not what the scripture meant by I die daily. If you look at the journey of Apostle Paul, <laughs> yes, if you look at the journey of Apostle Paul, can I share a dimension of his journey with each and every one of us so we can understand it? In the book of 2 Corinthians and chapter 11, I believe it is, so we can understand what he meant by that from verse 24. And this is what he says. 
from the Jews five times. I received 40 stripes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day. I have been in the deep. In journeys often in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles, in perils of the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness, in toil, in sleeplessness, often in hunger and thirst, in fastings, often in cold and nakedness beside the other things what comes upon me daily my deep concern for all the churches so he can begin to see that the dying daily that he died was the yielding and the surrendering to the will of the father jesus said let not my will but yours be done can you see it let not my will so the dying daily was a, an act of surrender. So every time you surrender to the will of God, every time the Father says, hey, you know, you're going to go down that dimension, but this is all that is going to happen to you. Hey, Lord, <laughs> you know, that you mean you're going, to, you're going to stone? You mean I'm going to suffer shipwreck? You mean my own brethren? They're going to do this to me? You mean, you know, the Gentiles? They're going to want to stone me? You mean my own countrymen? They want to kill me? Uh, you mean if I if I if I go there to basically try to bring that person out, I might I might almost be killed for it. <laughs> Lord, let not my will, but yours be done. You die daily. Do you see it? Because in that journey, I don't know whether I'm gonna come out of it or I'm gonna, you know, sometimes the father doesn't tell you, sometimes he tells you. So I it's it's all about faith. Do you see it? It's all about what? It's all about faith. So you can begin to understand it. Where he was helping us to understand that it's all about the will of the Father. The dying daily was what he experienced on his journey. That's why you can read that he went to preach and eventually they stoned him and he was, they left him for dead and he had to go back to that city and he went there and he preached again. He went on the ship. He told them, don't go on the ship. But they went. The ship broke in pieces. But yet he said, none of you will be lost. He went with them. Can you see that act in which he was moving? Yes. To the point that some people... They gathered. They said, we are not going to break our fast until Apostle Paul died. Can you see? Some men, they bound themselves together with an oath and said, <clears throat> until Apostle Paul dies, we are not going anywhere. So you can see the dying. He was dying. It was to the will of the Father, not to the flesh. Jesus needs your flesh. You're not in the realm of the flesh because that body is the body of Christ. You are not in the realm of the flesh. You are in the realm of the spirit because that is who you are. Jesus told us in John chapter 4, those who worship the Father, they worship him in spirit and in truth because who is the Father? He is spirit. And that is who you are. Can you see it? So now we begin to understand as we continue. <laughs> so Jesus continued, in, you know, when I was talking about increase at the same time, this is what you experience in John chapter 2. Jesus came to the wedding. What happened in John chapter 2? The Bible says the wine finished. All of a sudden there was decrease. Yes, there was decrease because the wine finished. But Jesus came and he brought increase. Everywhere Jesus was, it was increase. Can I share that with you? Some few journeys in the Bible? Yes. Let's look at the five loaves of bread and two fish. Did he decrease it or did he increase it? <laughs> look at Lazarus. Did he decrease Lazarus or did he increase Lazarus? Can you see the dimension? All the people that were brought to him who were sick, was it decrease or was it increase? Even in the New Testament, in the book of Acts, when they healed the man, you know, at the beautiful gate, what happened? It was increase. Everywhere Jesus is about, is all about increase. So why has religion continued to use the scripture, I must decrease and he must increase? He's already in you. Can you see it? So most of the time when you hear that scripture, why are you persecuting me? It's because Jesus wants to increase in you, but you are praying to be decreased. <laughs> so it is nobody outside who is persecuting you, but you persecuting Jesus that is in you. To God be the glory. So because you are one, remember in John chapter 17, Jesus said that we may be one as you and I, we are one. You are already one with Christ. So it is not your spirit 
and then Christ's spirit. No, it is one spirit. And that spirit that is in you is the spirit of the Father. You don't have your spirit because it was prophesied in the book of Ezekiel. He said, I will give you a new spirit and I will give you a new heart. And in the New Testament, we already have that spirit and that heart. So it's a matter of yieldingness. So when you're yielding to the will of the Father, you begin to see how your heart continues to yield to the will of God, how your spirit is surrendering. And when you surrender, you see that your soul is surrendered and even the flesh is surrendered. To God be the glory. So you can begin to understand. That's why the Bible tells us, how long are you going to be caught between two opinions? Because John was under the old covenant. He was not in the new covenant. He was under the old testament. Can you see it? He was under the old testament. So when people are praying that prayer, you're praying under the old testament because John was the last prophet according to Jesus. So how can we increase when creation is waiting for us, how can we increase when Jesus promised us? He said, creation is waiting for your manifestation. Creation is waiting for your manifestation. The people around you, they are waiting for your manifestation. So how long will creation continue to wait? How long will the people around you continue to wait when you're decreasing? Decrease is not the way. Increase is the way. So that's why you begin to see when Jesus was trying to increase the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they picked up stones. They tried to stone him. Can you see? They tried to push him off the cliff because he was trying to bring them higher. I know you know the law of Moses. I know you've been in the law of Moses, but I am here. I am greater than Moses. But they refused to increase because just in the same way, they rather stay in the level that they are. And that's why a lot of people still continue to pray that prayer. Help us to decrease so that you might increase. <laughs> Can you see that dimension? That's why Bible tells us in the book, I believe in the book of 1 Corinthians, it says that what? Paul plants and Apollo waters and God gives, what does he give? Increase. God gives increase. You're praying decrease when God is intending to give you increase. So how can God increase what you are decreasing? How can God increase it when you are praying to be decreased? He lives in you. Your body is the temple. The Bible tells us that Christ is your body. You are the body of Christ. You are the body. So Christ who is in you is waiting to manifest. So it's not a place where, hey, you know, Lord, I, I, I'm here. You come and do what you need to do. You know, your, let your spirit come. His spirit is already in you. He's just wanting to manifest. Under the old covenant, he comes and he goes. Under the new covenant, he manifests. Can you see it? It's about manifestation. Everything in the new covenant is about manifestation. The spirit of wisdom, manifestation. The spirit of knowledge, manifestation. Revelation, manifestation. Angels, manifestation. 24 elders, they manifest. Every dimension of the heavenlies right in the new covenant is all about manifestation. Yes, they still come. But the very foundation of it is manifestation. So you can see that dimension. And that's why the Father is helping you to understand. We need to do away with that prayer. Help me to decrease that you might increase. No. He said, for it pleased the Father that the fullness of him may dwell. The fullness of him already dwells in you. And he wants to manifest. But how can he manifest when we continue to pray the prayer of decrease? Limitations. Hindrances. Can you see it? So now you continue to understand that the reason why John had to decrease was not because he wanted more of Jesus. It was because his time was up. He had finished. Do you see it? Let's look at the assignment of John the Baptist in the book of Matthew chapter 3. I would let's 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 help to understand so that you can understand why that in itself is absolutely wrong. Let's let's look at it from Matthew chapter 3. The Bible says in verse 1, in those days John the Baptist came 
preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of by prophet Isaiah. So you can see, a prophet, a prophet John was already being prophesied about in the days of who? Isaiah saying, the voice of the one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Can you see it? Now you can begin to understand it. That's why you see that this was the assignment of, Jesus, of, of John the Baptist. This was his assignment. That is why I've been encouraging a lot of people. Go into your scroll in the book of Revelation chapter 4, 5, 6, 7, all the way to 10. Go and find out what your assignment truly is. You are the scroll. There are seals around you. Yes, that needs to be opened up before your scroll is open. So before your ministry can come into fullness, there are things that you need to do. That's, that's what the seals are all about. Can you see it? That's what the seals are all about. There are things you need to do that will lead you to the what? To the opening of your ministry. To the opening of your business. To the opening of your marriage. To the opening of what God has called you to do. So you can begin to understand it. For John the Baptist, his assignment was to get the people ready for Jesus. To baptize in readiness for Jesus to come. And then to baptize Jesus himself. And then to reveal Jesus and testifying about him. As, as soon as those things were done, now he must decrease. And Jesus ready to come onto the scene. So you can begin to see it. You can see what Apostle Paul said. I have finished the good fight of faith. He knew that his assignment was done. How are you able to tell if you have even begun your assignment? Or how are you able to tell if your assignment has ended when you don't even know anything about your assignment? <laughs> Do you see that in itself? This is why we've been encouraging on this channel. Because I believe I did a, a teaching on how to look into your scroll and help you to understand that your assignment is in your scroll. For what you came here to do on earth is in your scroll. And you need to find out. And to find out, you have to first open the seals concerning it. And the seals are guided by seven spirits. The spirit of the Lord, the spirit of the fear of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom, wisdom, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, and the spirit of might. So, in one of those seals, there is, a, there is the spirit of the Lord that will help you to walk in them. And as you begin to walk in them, the seals are broken. You've done that. The seals are broken. You've done that. The seals are broken. You've done that. The seals are broken. And from there, you begin to know the intentions of the Father because you are the scroll. So you can begin to see that after all that was revealed to Apostle John, the Bible says in Revelation chapter 10, now go and take the scroll. After the seals were broken off, the revelations came. Now he says, now go and take that scroll. He became the scroll and he said, now this is your assignment. You are going to go and testify. You will prophesy. <laughs> so you can see why in the dimension there is the prophetic. It says, Apostle Paul, Apostle John, you're going to prophesy. So your assignment is to prophesy to nations, to kings, and all of them. So he can begin to see it. He saw everything. Then his assignment was given. So you can see with, Apostle, with John the Baptist, this was his assignment. That what? He would get the people ready. He would baptize Jesus and reveal and baptize Jesus and reveal Jesus and testify of him and declaring him to the world. So you can see that Jesus could not begin until John had to testify of him. And then eventually the father affirmed that testimony and Jesus went into the wilderness. So you can begin to see it. This is the reason why as soon as it was finished, he had to what? He had to decrease. Can you see it? So as soon as the voice thundered from heaven and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. From there on, we began to see there was not much about John the Baptist anymore because Jesus has stepped into this assignment. So you can begin to see it. <laughs> that is why I want you to look at it from this dimension. Can we, can, we, can we just honor wisdom for a bit? Just think about it. You are the CEO of your company. You have a managing director. So, for example, you are probably, you have a meeting scheduled for 10 o'clock, but you're running late. You tell your manager, stand in for me. 
and he was there, you know, until I get there. And before you got there, the manager was already, you know, he was already going on with the meeting. But as soon as you step into the boardroom, what happened? The manager has to give way because now the CEO is now here. Can you see it? Because the instruction was, stand in for me until I get there. And he did stand in until the CEO, you yourself, you got there. Now, the managing director has to withdraw that the CEO is now here. There is not much I have to say now. He has everything that he needs to say. In the same way with Jesus and John the Baptist. And you are Christ. So why are you decreasing when Christ is trying to what? To manifest through you. Can you see that dimension to God be the glory? So John's ministry came to an end. So now you can see what Jesus testified about John in Matthew chapter 11. Look at what Jesus said about John, right? He says here from verse 7, as they departed, because John was in the Baptist. John was, <laughs> I said John was in the Baptist. <laughs> Lord have mercy. John was in prison, isn't it? And then, you know, he was not sure. You know, he got into a place who was like a tight corner. And he's like, am I really sure that Jesus is the one who is, who is to come? Because, you know, how can, how can I be in prison? And Jesus is out there doing what he needs to do. And they came to, Je they came to Jesus. And Jesus said, hey, so as soon as they came to Jesus, Jesus was healing the sick. He was opening the eyes of the blind. The dead are being raised. And Jesus said to them, go and tell John the things which you hear and see. So in verse 7, as they departed, you can see he did not give the testimony while they were there. He gave the testimony after they had gone. He said, as they departed, Jesus began to say to the multitudes concerning John, what did you go into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? What did you go out to see? A man clothed in soft garments? Indeed, those who wear soft clothing are in king's houses. But what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before you who will prepare your way before you. Assuredly, I say to you, among those born of women, there has no reason one greater than John the Baptist, but he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. The prophets of the law, talking about the Old Testament of the law. <laughs> and the Bible says, and if you're willing to receive it, it is Elijah who is to come. He who has ears, let him hear. So you can begin to see it. Then in verse 18, he said, John came neither eating or drinking. They say he's a demon. Then the son of man came eating and drinking. And they say, look, a glutton, a wine bibber, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is justified by her children. But look at the testimony Jesus gave about John the Baptist. He was the one who came to prepare my way. He was the one who the Lord used, God my Father used in heaven to prepare the way for me. So you can begin to see it. Now you can understand. He said that what? Now he says, every prophet prophesied until John, which makes John the last prophet under the old covenant. Yes, John was the last prophet under the old covenant that was to come to prophesy about Jesus. John was the last prophet because Jesus was here to set a new direction. And what is the new direction that he came to set? We see it in the book of what? Hebrews chapter 1. Because the Bible tells us. So, though we still have the office of what? Of the prophet, the office of the apostles, the office of the pastor, the evangelist, the office of who? The office of, you know, the teacher. But this is the dimension in which Jesus intended right from the very beginning. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 to 3. It says, God who at various times and in various ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets has 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 in these last days spoken to us by what his sons what did he say god who at various times in various ways in times past that means under the old covenant he spoke to our fathers by the prophets and in these last days he's spoken to us by his son whom he has appointed heir of all things through whom he made the world whom being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person upholding all things by the word of his power when he had himself purged our sins sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high having much 
having become so much better than the angels, he has, he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Who is the son that is being spoken of here? You, because you are in Christ Jesus. The Bible says you are seated in heavenly places with Christ. So for that reason that you're a son, you are, so a pastor is supposed to, pa is supposed to pastor as a son. A an apostle is supposed to be an apostle as a son. A, a, a prophet is to be a prophet as a son. A teacher is supposed to be a teacher as a son. An evangelist is supposed to be an evangelist as a son. So every office that the father has given, he says in this life, last days he has spoken to us by his son and this is not limited to the offices alone this is for everybody to god be the glory it's for everybody it's for you whether you're called to the office or you're not called to the office he says that what in these last days he has spoken to us by his son so that means as i am speaking to you it is the son speaking to you I prophesy, it is the Son prophesying. Because it is I who no longer live. You know, when I came into Christ, I, I was crucified with Jesus. <laughs> so it is I. As soon as I became born again, it was I who no longer lived. Because on, when I was in the world, <laughs> yes, it was I who was living. Yes, it was me. It was me in, on, on, with the old spirit. I was there living in the world. But as soon as I came into Christ, I became a son. It is I who no longer live, but Christ who now lives in me. So my spirit, the old spirit was taken away. The new spirit, which was spoken about in Ezekiel, became Christ Jesus. That's my spirit. As he is, so am I. And that is who you are at the same time. So we begin to understand. Can you see it? That's why the Father is helping us to understand that we need to be in our resurrection life. The resurrection life is what the Father wants us to live. Not going back to the cross again and again and again and again and again and again and again. Because every time you go back to the cross, that is why majority of the people, you see every morning when they wake up, Father, I thank you for this morning. Forgive me of my sins. Really? What if you had not committed any sin? <laughs> can, you, can you see it? Because religion gets you to focus on those things. You're supposed to live the life. And if the father says, hey, you did wrong there, he calls your attention to it. And when he calls your attention to it, oh, father, I did that wrong. I am sorry, father. I repent. Oh, I didn't treat that brother right. What would you have me do? Right, I'll go and apologize. Can you see him? And that is the leadership. Not continuing to focus, father. And our prayers is full of father. I, I forgive me for the sins I committed yesterday. Did he show you you committed anything? Is sin? No. So why are you? <laughs> All works, right? <laughs> so you can begin to see it. That's why it says the prayer that you must decrease, he must increase, is absolutely wrong. You're not here to decrease. You're here full of increase. You're supposed to overflow. The Bible says in the book of Acts, they were filled to overflowing. Every time they prayed, Father, fill us. Fill us by your spirit. Fill us. Fill us, Holy Ghost. Fill us. So the reason why some of you cannot be filled to overflowing is because you've prayed the prayer, I must decrease and he must increase. And he cannot increase because, you know why? You've separated yourself from him. Every time you say, I must decrease, he must increase. you separated yourself from him. The separation. You spoke a word of separation, a word of death. Death is separation. Because you're saying, I must, he must. <laughs> you're one. John chapter 17. You're no. You're, there is no your spirit, my spirit, his spirit. No. You're one spirit. The spirit in you is the spirit of the Father. The moment you became born again. So there is no decrease in that spirit. Because Jesus is always wanting to increase. So you can see the dimension of this in itself. And the Father is helping us to understand that his mercy, because now is the time to elevate majority of you. Now is the time for many of you to come up higher. Now is the time for many of you to increase in what he has called you to increase in. Ministry, business, finances, whatever he has called you to increase in. But you cannot increase because I've been calling you up higher. You cannot come up higher because I've been trying to get you to the place that you need to be, but you keep resisting me because... I must decrease and he must increase. He's already increased. He's overflowing. It is you who have to come to the knowledge of who you truly are 
in him, to come in alignment into what he has said about you. Get away from the cross and begin to live your resurrected life. Religion only brings you back into slavery. This is the reason why the Lord has been calling a lot of you out of the sanctuaries that you're in so that you can come in to the understanding of your identity because he wants to teach you some things that religion cannot teach you. Can you see it? You cannot learn. I repeat that with confidence. You cannot learn, yes, about your sonship in slavery. Could the children of Israel learn about who they were in Egypt? They knew who they were, but they could not live it because you know why? They were in bondage. That's why God had to send Moses to bring them out to live in freedom. This is exactly what Jesus said to Apostle Paul in Galatians 5 and verse 1. It is for freedom that Christ has set you free. Don't be yoked again to that religion. Don't be yoked again to that slavery. Don't be yoked again going back to learn from religion that cannot teach you. If religion could teach you about your identity, there would have been no way for Jesus to bring out the 12 apostles. He would have gone and taken them and sat in the synagogue while they are listening to a rabbi. <laughs> have you ever thought of that before if 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 religion could teach about identity right there would have been no need for jesus to uh, select the 12 of the, of the apostles they would have gone found a rabbi and sat under that rabbi with the pharisees and the sadducees and then learn about god from them but no jesus said i am the way the truth and the life so that is why he had to bring them all out <laughs> so that they can follow him because he's the way in freedom. But the people in religion, they didn't like it. That's why they kept persecuting. Are you being persecuted today because of your identity? Rejoice. But I say rejoice. You're in good place. That is what Matthew chapter 5 said. If they don't like it, I do. <laughs> and heaven is applauding you. Can you see that? See what Jesus is saying? I'm applauding you. If they don't like it, if the religious people don't like it, I, I love it. That's why I said religion is not people, right? No, 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 no. So don't go and start saying that is that person is religious, that person is religion, that person is religion. No, religion is a spirit that tries to hold people not to set them free. It is for freedom that Christ has set you free, not to be yoked again. So a lot of people are yoked into religion. That is why they cannot get free. So by the authority of the living word, I break the yoke of religion off you as you come into the knowledge of your identity in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. So for majority of you, where you have basically prayed with this prayer, you know, I must decrease, he must increase. We're just going to remove that limitation <laughs> so that we can return back to where we originally ought to be. So here is the prayer. Just repeat after me, if you're led to do so. Father, in the name of Jesus, every prayer that I have prayed with John, Chapter 3, verse 30. He must become greater. I must become less. He must decrease. I must decrease. He must increase. I renounce those prayers. I renounce the agreements with them. And every limitation that I have spoken over myself, through that, I repent of it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And amen. So I just want to pray for you. So Father, by the authority of your word, I break the powers of limitations over the lives of your people through this scripture. And I declare by the authority of your word that they are coming up higher in what you have called them to do. So every yoke of slavery that has been tied with the scripture, I break off the yoke by the authority of your living word. And I yoke them back to Christ because the Bible says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So I declare over them liberty and I bless them with your mercy. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Go forth in the increase of the Lord because this is his will for you right from the very beginning. Receive your increase. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you all. Be blessed in the presence of the Most High and have a wonderful, a glorious, a joyful and a blessed day in the presence of God that you have become. Amen. Blessings to you.